Welcome to the information event uh, of the Open Odyssey eScience call. Um, uh, my name is Irena Bakshi. I'm one of the program managers at the eScience Center, and I will chair this meeting today. Um, we have a program. Um, a little bit uh, behind that, sorry for the technical uh, problems. Um, first, I will invite Joris to present, uh, give introduction to the Netherlands eScience Center. Then uh, I will uh, pass it to Rob to talk about eScience expertise. Um, and then Kasia will uh, introduce Odyssey and Odyssey facilities. Then we'll have a little, uh, um, well, uh, interactive moment with Mentimeter survey. Uh, then we'll have 10 minutes break. And after that, we'll be followed by the uh, a little bit information on the call. I will present that and my colleague Yes will take over to give uh, us a spotlight on two projects from the previous call. And then the last session will be question and answer. Um, so, uh, I'm inviting you to, in principle, to share in the chat questions as they come, but we will uh, have a discussion, interactive discussion during that question and answer session. Uh, without uh, further ado, then I'll, I'll invite Joris to tell something about Netherlands eScience Center. Yeah, okay. thank you, uh, Reina, and uh, welcome, welcome everyone. Uh, I think there was a question in the chat about uh, things being recorded. Yeah, okay, that's, that's been answered. So everything being uh, recorded. Um, so welcome everyone. I'd like to tell you something about the, um, about the eScience Center. My name is Joris van Eynald and, and I am the general director of the, of the eScience Center. So happy to be here and introduce the eScience Center to you. Um, so there are a number of things on the slide. I'll, I'll go through, through them uh, quite, quite rapidly, but they gives you a kind of an impression of um, what we are and where we are and what we do. Uh, so the idea is that the eScience Center works on a national level. That, that is important to, 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 to remember, right? So we, we work basically for all universities and research institutes, the research infrastructures, like Odyssey. Um, so, so we work very much on a national level and for all, for all disciplines. Um, Interesting, it's our uh, anniversary year this year. So um, the uh, eScience Center, Netherlands eScience Center is the full title, was established as an independent foundation in 2012. The center itself is slightly older, but the uh, foundation statutes stem from 2012, which means that we are, we'll be celebrating this, if I'm correct, on the 7th of July. So that's, uh, that's uh, very near now. Um, in a uh, fortunately corona-free period, or a rather um, a period without lockdowns, in which we can uh, you know, celebrate that. Uh, and the the funders of the uh, eScience Center are um, the Dutch Research Council (NWO) and SURF. Um, so this was a kind of a mechanism to um, ensure that you know money from the ministry ended up the eScience Center to do what it is supposed to do, and that is help researchers with their uh, software. The um, people who do this at the eScience Center are called research software engineers. Um, I'll come back to them in a moment, but the uh, larger part of the eScience Center is populated by these RSCs. They are the people we working with you on projects, uh, if you are successful. Um, we have a strategy, which was, uh, I think this would be our third strategy now. Uh, which we, we began uh, last year. Uh, and that strategy consists basically of two ambitions, which I'll uh, come back to in, in, in the next slide. But underlying this, and you know, as, as the, the um, point of departure for our uh, strategy, uh, we have a vision statement and a mission statement. And I've highlighted in red the important bits. So our vision is to create a, a robust research community in the future uh, in which everybody basically is able to do what the eScience Center people can do now. So that is a vision that will probably never be realized, and if it will be realized somewhere in a very far off future, but it does kind of set the agenda for us. So we are really keen to transfer the knowledge we have to uh, any uh, interested researchers out there uh, to make sure that the Netherlands keeps at the, um, you know, stays at the cutting edge of international research. Um, so we try to enable digitally enhanced research, that's in our mission statement, and we try 
to empower researchers in you know any discipline. Those are two important things. To make sure that the research materializes and that the researchers who do that research are empowered to do that. Um, so much for the vision statement and the mission statement. They return in the next slide. So thank you. Uh, there you see the vision statement and mission statement again, but on these both um, to the left and the right of mission, you see ambition one and ambition two. And basically, our strategy is divided into these two sections. Ambition two is very much about knowledge transfer. So that is where we do our training. We give a lot of training um, in, on uh, different levels and uh, on different themes. Um, ambition one is the project. And if you look at our, our budgets, about 30% goes to ambition two. So that is you know, part of that then goes to uh, the training. Part of it goes to community management, which is something we've invested in heavily uh, recently uh, because we're keen to uh, develop research communities uh, that will continue with the software that we can build for them. Uh, so that's all ambition two. Ambition one is about 70% of our budget. And that is where the projects come in. This is how we run, uh, run projects. Um, and we have different kinds of projects. We have our own uh, calls for uh, proposals uh, from the basic funding we have. And sometimes we collaborate with, um, with other uh, organizations like Odyssey in this case. And well, you see a kind of list, uh, the open calls for e-science domain research on the left and the collabor collaborations in innovative technologies are two of our major projects. Um, they they uh, basically appear on them uh, annually. And the deadline for both um, calls has uh, passed uh, last month. So we will be going into the um, full proposal stage now. Um, but we also have uh, lots of other calls, uh, like small scale initiatives, um, but also uh, collaborations, which are also smaller scale initiatives, for example, with, uh, with Odyssey. And a lot of other things I won't bother you uh, with now, but um, this all falls under ambition um, one. Then the next slide, please. Um, so uh, a short note on, on the way we work. And um, basically, I have a definition of, of, of a project here. A project is a lead applicant. So an, uh, um, uh, LA stands for the lead applicant, uh, or just applicant in the case of Odyssey, uh, uh, plus uh, RSE. So in some of our calls, um, we ask an applicant to form a team. So it has to be a kind of a, a, a dual proposal. An applicant has to find somebody else at another institution and then um, uh, to, to co-submit uh, a proposal. Uh, and that would be the LA and, and his or her team. Uh, but also in Odyssey, this works where uh, this requirement isn't there, I think, but there is a possibility, of course, to, to, um, to work on the project with a team. And to that, uh, you know, to our partners, uh, the applicant uh, um, with or without the team, we add those RCs, and I'll come back to those in the next slide. Important is that we try to work um, uh, on a, uh, you know, driven by demand. So the demand from the research field is very important uh, to us. So we want to know what your research challenges are so that we can help you with, uh, with them. Now at the East Science Center, this is, I think is important to mention. Um, um, and uh, it's something I have to deal with every day. A lot of technological terms, computer science terms float around in conversations. And uh, there's a lot of that stuff on, on our website. And we have been called intimidating in this respect. And um, I, I am intimidated on, on a daily basis, but that I'm a mere historian. So I'm kind of, you know, uh, not really the, the, the usual suspect you would find at the eScience Center. Um, but my, uh, the only thing I want to say in this respect is don't feel intimidated. Basically, if you keep in mind that, you know, um, you have data, we can help you work with that data. That is, I think, really the rule of thumb you should keep in mind. And then, you know, all the jargon and so on, um, just take it for granted for the time being. Um, but in the end, what we do is we try to, you know, raise the technological uh, bar as high as we can. So come up with state-of-the-art solutions from computer science and digital infrastructure, where all these computer terms, of course, float around. Uh, but that's what we try to do for you. Um, and we try to do that in an, an open science way. So open science is very important uh, to us, uh, developing reusable software so that we don't continuously uh, reinvent uh, the wheel. Sustainability of software is very high on our agenda, uh, but in, in general, um, you know, the openness of all software data and knowledge 
um, we prefer publishing uh, open access, for example, as most of you uh, will or all of you will. Um, so open science is very important to us. Then, um, yeah, who are our partners in, uh, in the projects? Those are the research software engineers I mentioned a moment ago. I think at the moment we have something between 60 and 70 uh, research software engineers working at the um, Netherlands eScience Center. And most of them have a PhD. So these are very, you know, um, advanced, uh, high level uh, people uh, with a um, significant amount of uh, expertise and schooling um, who all are able to deal with ICT. So uh, with applied uh, computer science, if you wish. Um, they are required to both understand your research question and to apply these computer science methods to them either to, to find uh, ICT solutions to those questions. Um, most of our people come either from computer science or they come from uh, a discipline. Uh, and that could be any discipline within a, an academic setting. And we have much of, uh, uh, we have most of everything, I think, uh, um, many astrophysicists, um, for example, um, more than the rest, but we're also in investing more and more in, in people from the social sciences and humanities uh, domain. Um, so yeah, the social science and humanities section is actually um, being, um, being built as, as we speak. We are, um, there's still some vacancies there, I think, or at least there are conversations going on to fill these vacancies. And um, well, we have a section devoted to uh, the social sciences and humanities consisting of 12 RSEs. Basically, the way we work is that um, different people from different uh, sections within the um, uh, e-science center, so they don't need to be from the social sciences and humanities sections, can work on a project. It's just, you know, what the best fit is, fit is what the best um, solution is. Uh, to a project, and we try to, um, you know, draw on uh, the uh, RSEs with the relevant expertise. Um, so this is what I wanted to say: something about the eScience Center and about the way we work. And um, it's back to Rina again. So thank you, yep. Melissa. Thank you, Joris. Um, we will switch now to Rob, and I give him floor to talk about the eScience expertise and technological competences. Rob. Thanks, Lena. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Ah, okay. Um, so my name is Rob van Newport. I'm the director of technology at the Netherlands eScience Center. I actually have two heads on today. I'm also a member of the management board of Odyssey. Um, and I have the, the task or the opportunity to say something about uh, technology. Um, and I'll try to... Uh, not to, uh, to be uh, too uh, intimidating. Uh, there are a lot of boxes and technical terms on this slide. Um, but I'll, I'll try to just stick to the highlights. Um, so what's always good to remember when you write a proposal to us is that you basically explain your problem and what you want to do, but not necessarily how you want to do it. And that's um, where you also come in. We can help you with this. Um, and a part of this, this whole core process is that we uh, provide uh, research software engineers and also consultancy meetings with our research software engineers that can help you, who can help you um, yeah, giving advice uh, how you write the best proposal and what kind of technology you need to answer your research questions. So we're in this together, we can help you. Uh, yeah, we won't write uh, the proposal, of course, but we can advise on the technology that you, uh, you, can, you can use. Um, well, I'll try to give an overview. Um, let's start with data processing. You what is already mentioned. Um, uh, if you have data, uh, we can help you with the processing of that data, making sense of that data. That could, for example, be data from the CBS, or it could be data from the list panel, uh, survey data, or any other type of, uh, of data. And we can help you to organize that data, to make sense of it, uh, and to analyze it, basically. That's the analytics part. Uh, where we um, yeah, really try to make sense of data, try to recognize patterns. Um, in, in, on the slide, it says big data analytics, which is actually a very uh, unfortunate term, to be honest. Because it, I think big data and analytics has nothing to do with the size of the data. It's also about complexity of the data, or it can be both. And in my experience, the, the data in the social sciences is actually very heterogeneous and complex. Not always big, sometimes it's big, but it doesn't have to be. It can still be very challenging 
to deal with the data and to analyze it because it's so complex and sometimes unstructured. Um, and we can help with that, so, uh, for example, with text uh, analysis or with image processing or with machine learning and yeah, training uh, AI models um, to make sense of the data, to classify the data, for example. Um, yeah, natural language processing I already mentioned. Um, we do lots of computing as well. Um, so if you need to scale things up, uh, if you have a problem and you maybe already wrote some software to, to, uh, to tackle the data or to, to, to implement a model, a multi-agent system, for example, and it's too slow, then we can use computing to basically speed this up and to scale up your application. Uh, so there can be a reason to use uh, high performance computing. Another reason could be data security. So for example, within Odyssey, we have the um, uh, Odyssey Secure Supercomputer, uh, which is coupled to the uh, CBS Remote Access Environment. So if you need to work with uh, CBS data, for example, you can do this in the uh, Odyssey Secure Supercomputer, which is uh, a part of, uh, of SURF, actually. Um, I think we have a presentation on that later, eh? uh, Reina, am I correct? Yeah, yes. so it will be explained later. So that does it always have to be about performance? Sometimes it's about security and um, being, a, being in a safe environment where you can actually process your data safely and combine different data sets in a safe way. Um, well, one overarching um, expertise that we have is software quality. We really care about software. And whenever you write software, you want to make it as reusable as possible. Um, so we want to to write it in a way that's really high quality and structured and readable for everyone. Um, so with lots of documentation and testing and so on. So you basically have a good instrument. Uh, so software is a part of your instrumentation, you could say. Um, and so that your research also is more reproducible. Uh, and you can continue with the software after the project ends. Uh, you, but also your colleagues, of course. Um, so software quality is important. Oh, also oh in sorry. Yeah. Next uh, slide. Uh, almost. One, one final okay. is developing workflow technologies. Um, and that's basically about automation. So if you have a, a process where you want to, for example, uh, copy your data, do some filtering on the data, run some, some programs on your data, and you want to automate this process, you can do so in a workflow and we can help you uh, yeah, basically automating this whole process. So it's easy to repeat uh, later. Uh, yeah, Reina, maybe the next one. Yes. Um, so one thing I didn't mention, but that might be relevant in, uh, in projects in the social sciences, is privacy preserving analytics. So quite often we work, of course, with data that's sensitive. Uh, again, that can be data from CBS or survey data from LIS or, or other data. And you want to combine it with other data. And you want to, do to, yeah, to analyze that data, basically. Uh, and we can help you with this. Um, there are many different technologies that we often use in many different projects in the social sciences, but also in the life sciences, for example, um, yeah, to work with this uh, trusted data. And one, one way of doing this is remote access, uh, which you might know if you work with CBS data, yeah, with the uh, remote access environment. Uh, that's actually now coupled with the uh, Odyssey uh, secure supercomputer, like I said before. And we can help you getting the data there and, and running your processing on that data in that environment. Because that environment can also be a little bit intimidating. Uh, it's a big supercomputer and uh, yeah, it's not always that easy to use. Um, what we also sometimes do is bring the computation to the data. So if you cannot move the data, we can actually bring the algorithm or the computation to the data. So you, you keep the data local, basically. Sometimes that's a good solution. Um, and what we also sometimes do is distributed processing, for example, federated machine learning. You can actually train a machine learning model, uh, for example, um, a deep neural network, um, basically also locally. And what happens then, it's actually shown in the picture uh, on the right. What happens is you train a, uh, a neural network on data locally, for example, in this case, in a, in a hospital. And you train for each hospital individually. And you never share the data, but you, you share the, the neural network. You share, you share the trained model, basically. Uh, and using only that model, you cannot reconstruct the data. So it's it's relatively safe, safe way of uh, using with machine learning without actually sharing the data itself. So that's pretty high end, but that's uh, something that, that we can help you with. Um, next one, please, right now. So this is another example. Uh, 
Um, I try to make it a little bit more concrete by giving examples from the social sciences, actually. So this is about um, yeah, big data analytics, analytics, you could say. And uh, like I said, the data doesn't have to be big. It can also be complex. And this is basically an example of this, or two examples of this. Um, and in this case, it's about uh, networks in particular. So how do you analyze complex networks? And on the left, there's an example from uh, Frank Takes, a project we did with him, which is uh, where we basically built an online platform to in investigate the dynamics of uh, yeah, global networks of companies uh, and how, how all the financial transactions are basically flowing throughout those companies. And it gives uh, insight in the, um, yeah, the evolution of tax avoidance uh, globally. Yeah, how does that happen? Which companies do this? Uh, and how does it uh, go across the globe? And do lots of complex network analysis to do this. Um, and we also map it on uh, a map, for example. Um, and it gives a lot of insight in, uh, in the data that's, uh, that's there. It's very complex data. Now, on the right, there's another example that's uh, about uh, case law analytics. Uh, that's a project with Gijs van Dijk. And what we did there is we, uh, we basically took data from uh, rechtspraak.nl. Uh, so, ja, uh, yeah, a site uh, used by uh, legal researchers. Um, and what we did there is we basically did a natural language processing um, to detect uh, incoming and outgoing references, citations basically, from court decisions. So you can basically link the court decisions together. Is there any, um, yeah, do they refer to each other? And we basically also visualize this, it's interactive. So you can get very quickly, you can see, okay, uh, which cases are referring to which other cases, which are relevant. And you can see a summary of those cases, for example. And that uh, was really a breakthrough in that field. Uh, because constructing these data sets that would, use, uh, would uh, basically in the past take many months, of, uh, of experts uh, to really generate those data sets. And with these tools, they can actually do it in 20 minutes. And uh, now, nowadays they're actually using this in the classroom and the students can actually uh, learn about uh, yeah, case law and how it's all connected and actually generate data sets uh, yeah, within a couple of hours. While in the past, it was basically completely invisible. Um, yeah, so those are basically examples of how we can help. Uh, next one, Lena. So again, more examples. These are uh, five projects that we uh, granted last year in this call, in the same call that we're talking about today. Um, and what you see here is that we basically cover uh, many disciplines within the social sciences. So from uh, psychology, communication sciences, sociology, and organization studies, for example. Um, so it's pretty broad in terms of disciplines, but also very broad in terms of technology. So these projects use very different technologies, um, uh, agent-based models, so that's a uh, yeah, computer model of, uh, of the physical world, and the interactions between uh, yeah, uh, people, for example, in the physical world. Um, we use artificial intelligence, um, and basically uh, computer vision technology, image processing, where we recognize images in news feeds. That, that's basically the second project. Um, and in this case, it's news about AI and how is that news being framed? Often it's, it's with pictures, yeah? there are these uh, nice uh, stock photos in those uh, news messages. And we want to analyze, okay, what's the sentiment in this? Yeah? Is that uh, presented in a very positive way or in a very negative way, for example? And how are images being used to, to set the scene and to, uh, yeah, to convince people, basically? Um, the next one will actually be explained later, I think. We give an example. I'm not sure if Jisk is doing this or Laura. Yes, Jisk is going to do it. Yeah. yeah. So he will uh, give you a bit more in-depth information about uh, the project with René Bakkers. Um, yeah, what else did we do? The next one is also doing natural language processing, uh, really scanning large documents and trying to make sense of those documents and also coupling them together. And finally, we do lots of visualization work. Uh, so you can actually inspect your data, learn from your data, turn your data into information, basically, and also make that interactive. So you can really interact with your data. So it's very diverse, technically, I would say, the work that we did. Um, next one. Um, 
Yeah, the next one, the topic is the research software directory. I'll try to keep it short. Uh, this is a tool that can help you in preparing your proposal. Uh, and it can help you to find software that's already out there. So basically all the software that we write, we publish in this research software directory. Um, and we put it in the social context. So we say, okay, this is what the software is doing. It's used in those projects by those researchers. Um, it's cited in these and these papers, it's using these and these data sets, etc. So you have a whole context around this software is available. And you can search through this uh, directory and basically quickly find software that might be relevant for you. And also if we produce software in the projects uh, that we do also in the context with, uh, of this call with Odyssey, um, if we write software there, we basically also publish that in this uh, directory. And so other people might also use it also after the project ends again. Um, yeah, one final thing we do here with the software is basically we try to measure the impact of the software, uh, which might also be interesting for you because that also shows the impact of the, your research, and not only with papers or, or books that you may write, but also with the software. That also uh, can generate a long-lasting impact, actually, if the software is being reused. Um, yeah, I think that's it for me. I think that's it, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so, Kasia, I think you wanted to share your screen, so I'm going to stop sharing. Thank you, Lena. Uh, welcome, uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Kasia Karpinska. I'm a scientific manager of Odyssey. Uh, I'm replacing my colleague from Emory, who unfortunately couldn't make it. So um, I have uh, big, big shoes to fill uh, here. But I will do my best to present Odyssey and our collaboration with the ESIN Center, which I think it's... Uh, Going to be very more prominently discussed uh, today, of course. Uh, in my presentation, I will focus on uh, what we are, what we do, and how can you, as a researcher, uh, use uh, all facilities that are there within uh, Odyssey to uh, boost your proposal even even further. Uh, I've been granted 15 minutes. Uh, it's way too short to present everything uh, that Odyssey does, so that's my disclaimer uh, from the start. If there are any things that I'll just going to touch upon or you're interested in and you couldn't hear enough uh, about it, please drop me a line. I will share my details, uh, contact information uh, later on. Uh, so uh, without a further ado, I will, I will try to make the best out of this 15 minutes that uh, uh, Rena uh, granted, granted me. Uh, so you already, uh, uh, so what we are, what, what, what actually Odyssey is, uh, we are the National Infrastructure for Social Sciences and Humanities in Economic Inno uh, uh, Innovations. Uh, my apologies. Uh, and what we do as a research infrastructure, we basically, uh, our aim is to provide data tools and expertise that it's needed for scientific theories. And as you see here in the slide, uh, no scientific breakthrough can happen without uh, sufficient um, uh, infrastructure. So microscope, you can think of a microscope or, or telescopes that are, that are needed in, in uh, life sciences uh, and exact sciences. Of course, for social sciences, this is, uh, this is different, uh, but the bottom line is, is basically the same. Data, tools, and expertise are uh, what it's needed to uh, make sure that those uh, scientific breakthroughs uh, can, can happen. And this is our, our mission and our aim to deliver this to social scientists. Uh, so what we are, as I said, the National Infrastructure for Social Sciences, uh, it's a federated uh, infrastructure. We collaborate uh, and act on behalf of over 40 organizations. Uh, many of them are faculties of social sciences uh, uh, and economics uh, uh, faculties uh, in the Netherlands. You must have uh, recognized your own university there and with your logo. But we also collaborate with uh, many partners who make this all possible. And uh, uh, eScience Center is, is one of them that we also collaborate with DANCE or, or, or CBS. Uh, and oh, one more thing, uh, we are financed by uh, two different uh, financial streams. On one hand, this is the uh, contribution that our member organization put in the pot, uh, divided and, and kind of sponsored the finances and many activities of Odyssey, but we were also granted the a uh, roadmap uh, grant uh, two years ago, and uh, we are currently uh, using this money to expand further and, and build new facilities that will benefit uh, research community in, in the Netherlands. 
So how we are organized, uh, I will go very, very quickly to this. Uh, there are uh, four, uh, four uh, streams within, um, within Odyssey. Uh, there is a data facility uh, where we create access to, to data. Uh, there is observatory where new data is being collected. Laboratory where the uh, new innovative methods are being tested and, and further developed. And there is also a hub, uh, which is more of a coordination uh, uh, stream uh, of Odyssey, where we uh, ensure that all what we work on is, is uh, nicely aligned and also uh, presented to the scientific uh, community. And uh, I'm showing you this uh, also to kind of uh, highlight uh, the lines in between all different streams, because this is what Odyssey also stands for. Uh, we have different streams, we work on different elements, but they are all could be used in, uh, in combination. So uh, it's not only individual facilities, but all of them can, uh, can complement each other and by definition also strengthen the scientific uh, impact of uh, uh, each facilities uh, that be, that's being used. And I'm going to focus a little bit more on this uh, in, in my presentation. Uh, so to, just to give you an idea what's happening uh, within each of those uh, streams, a few examples. Uh, data facility, that's among others, CBS microdata uh, access that Rock was already uh, uh, referring to, uh, in combination with, of course, uh, Odyssey Secure Supercomputer, so a high performance uh, computing environment uh, that uh, can be used uh, in conjunction with the microdata. Uh, Odyssey portal, I'm just going to flag that it's there, but I'm not going to uh, go into details uh, given the time constraint. Within data collection, uh, the, the observatory, we, uh, we uh, support data collections, uh, but also linking the historical sample of the Netherlands uh, to the uh, microdata, uh, and also develop media content analysis uh, lab, so information on uh, uh, media content and, and analysis of this uh, information. Uh, within observatory, you can find uh, all the innovative survey experiments, mass online experiment lab, or citizen science platform, which we also uh, develop with, uh, with our partners. And then the hub, as I said, communication events, uh, education, but also I think uh, important in this context, uh, social data, support by the social data science team and, and IS review as a, as a software and tool that, that we uh, also support. And of course, here are also the, the grants for computational social science, the e-science grant, this is also where it is uh, located uh, formally. So uh, as I said, I would like to highlight a few of the facilities that might be of uh, use uh, for your uh, own applications. I will just share a few words on um, each of them. Again, please let me know if you have uh, any questions or you would require a further a clarification on, on this. Uh, I would like to start with the CBS microdata, also something that uh, already been mentioned. Uh, and the idea here is that, uh, as a social researchers, we start with the idea of uh, uh, very often work with the survey data, which is uh, of course very valuable, but it has a one limitation that uh, it's it's two dimensional and it only covers information that researchers uh, ask in advance to their respondents. Uh, on the other hand, uh, my microdata, as we call it, which is also called uh, administrative data, uh, has this uh, great uh, value of having information of multiple uh, facets of the uh, daily life of the inhabitants of, uh, of the Netherlands. And the data is very complex, uh, multidimensional, and the structure of the data allows for creating multiple links. So what you see on the uh, right-hand side is the, uh, is the plot of all the metadata that's available within microdata services. So the, the part of CBS microdata that is responsible for uh, collecting and curating the, the microdata. And it's, uh, all those uh, uh, show how many different data sets can you link to this particular data set. So the linkages are uh, increasingly complex. Uh, it of course have a lot of uh, 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 benefits for a scientific process. Uh, so to give you an idea, what is possible? What, what is there within the uh, CBS? Well, you can see here the bullet points of uh, uh, topics that you can find information on within the uh, CBS from population, employment, business, health, income, education, and so on. And all of them, all of the data sets, uh, they have their own uh, 
persistent identifiers, uh, which means that they can be easily linked to one, uh, one another. And on top of this, there is also everything that's in the list panel uh, and other survey. So it also means that the information from the population registers, uh, another word for uh, microdata or admin data, uh, so all this information can be used in combination with the survey data that's uh, uh, collected elsewhere. Uh, I will I will shed, uh, I will share some details on the list panel uh, later on and possibilities that are there. But this is something that uh, you can keep in mind. And uh, uh, just to refer back to this uh, uh, this complex graph I'm showing you in in this slide. Uh, the possibilities that are there within the microdata uh, are enormous. So you can think about uh, creating complex networks. That's also something that uh, Odyssey is, is working on, uh, uh, networks of uh, Dutch uh, uh, citizens combined uh, from uh, collect, uh, created from different, uh, different layers. All this complex uh, data also requires complex uh, algorithm to analyze it and also uh, uh, compute environment. So these are also an ideas perhaps for, for your own research, how you can fully capitalize on, on the wealth of the data that CBS uh, possess. Uh, this is also a disclaimer. It's not that it's CBS microdata is being uh, uh, used uh, uh, freely. You have to meet all the uh, strict requirements that are, uh, 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 requested there. I'm not going to go into details, but I want to flag that this data is very securely safe, safely stored over there and only uh, uh, under strict conditions and made accessible for researchers. So I'm trying to follow to show here what is what is possible, the technicalities I'm, I'm leaving for other moment. Uh, as I said, the complex data requires complex measures in terms of algorithm and, uh, uh, and computer environment. And here it is, uh, Odyssey Secure Supercomputer that uh, uh, Rob already mentioned. So that's this uh, very complex uh, uh, part of the Dutch National Supercomputer, uh, which is no use at this point, uh, which allows researchers to significantly cut on the uh, compute time uh, for the complex uh, research project. Here I'm just showing you what this can do for you, uh, for your analysis of uh, microdata. It's an example of a study that uh, had uh, almost uh, 1.8 billion data points, uh, which uh, resulted in uh, four months of continuous calculations within remote access environment of CBS. And with this, within the OSCC, it took only one uh, week on 24 nodes with uh, uh, almost double uh, data points that were that were used. So this is again something to keep in mind when developing your research project. Of course, eScience Center can help you streamline your uh, algorithm, but this facility is there. So compute uh, uh, capacity should not be should not hold you back in coming up with your uh, research proposal. And then uh, shortly, uh, list panel. For those of you who are not familiar, it's online panel, uh, uh, household panel of uh, almost seven and a half thousand individuals, which is based on a uh, uh, on a true probability sample. My apologies, I didn't switch off those uh, notifications. Uh, the beauty of this panel is that it's truly representative, and also that the researchers can. Uh, can have their own survey or experiment being fielded within this uh, list panel. And of course, the data is linkable with CBS microdata. Uh, just like to give you an idea, maybe I'll skip this one for the sake of time. But I think like a few examples of interesting list panel project or possibilities that are there uh, include all that's related to data donation. Because like if you have your own uh, project within the list panel, you can propose data donations and uh, have the whole procedure uh, that's uh, uh, necessary run through the list panel. Uh, you can also conduct complex experiments. Uh, you can explore the use of sensors or wearables. Uh, you can explore the possibilities of uh, having speech to, technology, to uh, text technology. Uh, or complex uh, analysis. Uh, and as I said, those tools are linked and those facilities are linked. So you can link the information you collect within the list panel to CBS microdata. 
and you can uh, have the complex analysis uh, executed in uh, uh, obviously secure supercomputer. Uh, I think I will just flag one thing that this panel is extremely flexible. So also whatever your options are, whatever your uh, ideas are, most likely they will be, uh, uh, it will be possible to implement them within the, uh, the list panel. And then uh, I'll say research support. And here I would like to flag uh, the support of social data science team, SODA team, uh, which uh, supports, I would just say it upfront, supports also the application procedure and process for the uh, e-science uh, grant that we are offering here. Uh, these are social scientists and uh, methodologists and statisticians that can help researchers in the process of data acquisition, analysis, interpretation, or uh, communication. So uh, conveying the, the results of the study. And I think uh, it was already mentioned this, this intimidating element of, uh, of the ESI Center, sometimes perceived uh, intimidating uh, uh, image. Uh, I think with the support of the uh, social data science team, uh, this little hurdle can be taken, uh, taken away. They're very much uh, familiar with both the methods that the researchers uh, tend to use or want to apply, but they're also uh, well-versed uh, social scientists. So they also understand how your research question works with which uh, 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 data uh, and, and analysis uh, tool that you might uh, uh, want to use. So uh, when collaborating with them, you can either consider uh, having the full collaborative project. You can also use them for uh, in preparation for your e-science uh, grant application. Uh, they can also support you in uh, uh, on and off uh, uh, online uh, uh, Dropping during the online dropping session when they will uh, answer simple questions one might have. So this is also something that I would like to flag to all potential uh, applicants. Uh, this is also the support that uh, Odyssey is uh, giving to uh, its users. Uh, and I'm going to go through this one, IS review. That's another tool that, uh, uh, that we make uh, available with support of a team uh, working in Utrecht on this. It's an user-friendly open uh, source tool to screen large amount of textual data, uh, such as uh, for a systematic review or a metadata analysis. Uh, and it's, uh, uh, it also shows you the flexibility and ability to go through a lot of text in, in relatively quick uh, time. And of course, there's also possibilities to use this tool when applying uh, for the ESAS grant and expand it or bend it to your own uh, particular uh, needs. So I think uh, just leave it here. I'm here to offer you any types of support uh, you might need. You can find me uh, on, on Odyssey website. If you have any questions regarding uh, any of our facilities, please drop me a line. And I'm sorry for rushing so quickly through this, but I don't want to <laughs> destroy the planning that Rena made. Uh, so it might be a little bit rushed, but if there's any questions unanswered regarding our facilities, or you think like, hey, I would like to uh, brainstorm with you a little bit more about what is possible, please drop me a line. Uh, and as a final closing, I just want to stress once again, many uh, facilities that we offer can be used independently, but also in combinations. And I think it's uh, very wise to use them in combination because it strengthens the, the value of your proposal. And of course, in the end, also the, uh, the research questions that can be answered. So thank you very much, Rena, and sorry for running out of time. No worries. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Well, um... I'm just assuming that people came back from the break because I actually don't see the screen anymore except for my slides. So um, we resume this uh, call information event uh, to zoom in a little bit more into the call information. The current one, uh, I will present more details on the current call. And uh, 15 minutes later, uh, YESC will take over uh, to present two projects from the previous call. So let me just go on. So this call objective is to support researchers in the social sciences who would like uh, to have uh, digital technologies uh, or research software to support their uh, science questions, um, but need uh, additional expertise in applying actually these methods. And um, 
who can apply. So the lead applicant that uh, Joras mentioned in his presentation, LA, how we call it, uh, should hold uh, a contract at one of the ODSI member organizations. If you are not a, if you're not sure whether your organization is or design member organization, please follow the link that is on the bottom of this slide, uh, or otherwise just go to the Odyssey web page and you can navigate there. Um, so the lead applicant should also have a contract uh, uh, duration of the request, at least the duration of the requested project, and has a PhD. And uh, furthermore, the lead applicant activities should be integral to the proposed work plan, because that's uh, uh, we would like, of course, the uh, outcomes of the project to be a uh, long term supported by the lead applicant, and it's easier to embed uh, it into the activities of your research group or your own activities, if this is the case, the integrality. Um, then the lead applicant can uh, submit only one proposal in that capacity in this call. So you can be a, a part of research team for the other proposals, but only one proposal you can submit as a lead applicant. Uh, thereafter, we actually don't forbid people that were awardees from the previous call to submit the proposals, but Keep in mind that lead applicants that have no uh, prior history of projects awarded in the previous call will get preference. So what can be applied for? I talked about requirements. Now, what, uh, what about the projects themselves? So we have, uh, we're going to grant five uh, projects within this call this year. And each project is, um, three person month of the research software support it is research software engineer sorry support uh, the duration of the project could be three to six months and uh, lead applicants can submit it as a single applicant um, the proposal or as a part of the team can, can have a lead applicant can have a team but it's not a mandatory to have a, a research team and uh, the project is collaboration between the lead applicants, um, their team and research software engineers. I will come back to that uh, point one slide later. Um, the data that is very important for this project should be available at the project start. And the proposal should have a clearly defined research question from the social science. This is quite important. So the collaboration, uh, what can our research software engineers offer? Uh, they uh, offer an advice and support uh, during the project uh, to help uh, uh, coming uh, to the desired results outcomes. And these activities include uh, actually initial brainstorming on suitable technologies, uh, it could be advice on this, how to design experiments and uh, fine-tune further research question that uh, you have. Uh, technical implementation and testing we can help with uh, or can do that. Uh, help with interpreting the results. Uh, for example, if it's a machine learning algorithm, they can try to help you out with that too. Uh, contribution to the digital methodology uh, component in research paper. We would love if you are um, publishing research paper uh, that comes out of this project, of your project. Um, and then if a deliverable is a software, uh, the research software engineers can help you with the software release following our well, best practices. And the uh, call timeline is as follows. So this is an uh, information event. And then um, actually since the call was open until the call closes and uh, of August, um, uh, the consultation meetings can take place. Um, I will come back to the consultation meetings uh, uh, later. Then on 6th of September at two o'clock uh, European uh, uh, Central European time, uh, the deadline of the proposal is 
then from September to October, so in September, there will be an uh, admissibility check and then panel assessment in September. And then uh, somewhere in October, uh, you will receive back the final decision on your proposal, on your uh, grant application. So um, just tiny bit zooming into the goal procedure. So as I said, information event happens today. Then uh, mid to August consultancy meetings uh, take place. Then there is a, the September 6th that I set uh, deadline for the proposal submission via the easy chair system. I'll come back to that too later. Uh, then um, when we get the proposals after the closing deadline, I'll run the eligibility check. Uh, it's a lightweight, just that the proposal is submitted in time within before the deadline, whether uh, the lead applicant is a member of ODSI organization. Um, then, um, yeah, so I think, and the, if the, the template that is used is the proper template, uh, then there will be a, a panel assessment. Um, so the um, committee assessment committee uh, will rank the proposals and meet to uh, yeah to discuss this the scores and to make a final ranking uh, based on the assessment criteria and the assessment criteria is actually with an in a, a call text you can read it um, academic quality application of e-science expertise and reuse and sustainability uh, then the in mid October there will be a wording decision made uh, based on the recommendation by the assessment panel and um, finalized decision by the ODSI management board and uh, eScience center directors team together. Um, the assessment panel is uh, composed of the social scientists uh, ODSI. Um, uh, colleagues from Odisai and e-science experts. So consultation sessions. Uh, all applicants are invited to participate in the consultation sessions. These consultation sessions are optional. They are not mandatory, but we highly recommend it. Um, so there are two types of consultation meetings. Uh, one hour of consultation. Uh, these are individual meetings with the applicants uh, and uh, discussion on the broad spectrum of uh, topics like research question, uh, suitable technology solutions, viability of the approach, match with the science expertise. There will be then uh, e-science uh, center experts uh, and uh, so the team member present at those meetings. Please register it, uh, the link is here and I'll it will also go up in a, um, uh, on the call page as well uh, after the, uh, I think, uh, from tomorrow on. Um, and then uh, what Kasia mentioned also in her uh, presentation, uh, alternatively you can reach, or, to, or as well, you can reach Odisai Soda team uh, separately, either via email or one of the data drop in uh, sessions and discuss your project ideas and expect the data that is relevant to this, um, uh, your project proposal. Um, yeah, the, uh, so the um, uh, re, uh, so people that you are going to meet in this consultation sessions and meet people that are going to review proposals are a different uh, different type of uh, different uh, people. So they, so it, you're not going to get assessed during this consultation sessions. So please please feel free to reach us and register for this consultation sessions. Um, so now a little bit about proposal itself. Um, uh, proposal should have a research question, which is uh, in social sciences. Uh, should also say why uh, it is important to have, uh, yeah, the uh, research so software, how, how can this uh, answer your research question? Um, and then it has to be connected, the, the, the 
uh, proposal has to be somehow connected to the other research performed at the Odisai community. This would be really a strength. Um, and then you also have to specify something about the outcomes of the project, uh, deliver publication, blog post, white paper, software, code release. So in particular, to make it more concrete, I'm just showing you the, how the pro uh, proposal form looks like. In the proposal form, you have to give uh, details on, of the applicant. So that's the lead applicant details. Then research question, maximum 200 words uh, to describe your problem uh, and uh, pose a concrete uh, research question that fo uh, following from that problem. Uh, it's quite important to put it in the context uh, to show the importance of the problem that is being solved. So this is uh, 200 words. You don't have to uh, really reach the 200 words. Uh, it's just a maximum. Then planned work uh, section, you also 200 words, uh, describe your study. What do you expect the application of the software to do for you? And the last one is the expected outcome, also 200 words, describe what the deliverables of the project will be and how this results will be used in your uh, work in future and uh, promoted after the project ends. Then uh, a part where uh, if you are uh, if you are using data, if you are going to use the data in this project, it would it is very important to describe to give a metadata of this uh, data for each available data set. Uh, there is a table that you have to fill in, and you have to check the box that the data will be available at the start of the project. Make sure that's the case. And then there is uh, also a checkbox list uh, to ask about the use of the Odyssey facilities and explanation uh, for, the, for that use, if applicable. And just to note that this call does not provide funding for access to these facilities, but if you'd like to know more, then you can always reach out to the Odyssey and Kasia to discuss this some more. Um, next is submission instructions. Read all the documents for the call, call text specifically. It's very important because it contains a lot of uh, information, which is like assessment criteria, for example. Download the project proposal template, um, complete the template, save it as a PDF, and submit it via the easy chair. Uh, the uh, call uh, page I also reference here at the bottom, the first link is the call text uh, where you can find the call text and the proposal template. Also, there will be a links up for the recording of this uh, information day and other uh, relevant uh, documents and links to this call. And the second link is this easy chair uh, submission system link. Um, so for submitting your proposal, the easy chair system will require you to fill in Proposal title, which is your uh, title of your project, uh, the abstract, uh, that's just a verbatim copy paste research question section in the proposal form. Uh, at least three keywords and the proposal file itself in a PDF format. Just to recap, and I'm finishing here. The important links, all information on this call is via this link then please register to the free consultation hour with the eScience uh, and SODA via this form link. Uh, reach out to the SODA team for the consultation with SODA team uh, via the email or this one of the drop-in sessions. And 16th, if I remember, June is the next one that Kasia said at, six, uh, at four o'clock. Uh, and then the easy chair submission system link. And now I will uh, pass the floor to Yisk. Okay, Irena, thanks a lot. Um, I think we're on schedule. Maybe if there's questions, we do them here or do we do them after my short Let's spotlight? maybe do uh, after your short spotlight. Okay, so I hope everybody is still uh, alert and following. Uh, so you can please, put you, questions in chat. If you have questions, please interrupt me. 
Uh, my name is Jess Kattema. I'm a program manager at eSign Center. Uh, that means that in the day-to-day -day running of the of the projects that we fund through this call, I'm uh, 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 supervising the engineers that do those projects. I'm involved in, uh, yeah, in just helping the work getting done. Um, so I've been asked to present one or two of the projects that we funded last year, just to make it uh, more concrete. What exactly, uh, what what type of work we do, what kind of work we can do. Um, and what is exactly our expertise and how it could be useful for you. So if there's questions, please ask them. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, so as you've seen last year, we funded uh, five of those projects. Um, they're from social sciences uh, all over the all over the domains. Um, actually, uh, I think Jordan started this meeting that he was sometimes a bit uh, intimidated by all the technical jargon as it is he being an historian and not a computer scientist. I think I have sort of the opposite here. I'm more comfortable with uh, computer science and all the kinds of techn technological words than I'm really with the uh, exact application domains. But I will uh, try to explain a little bit what this uh, project of uh, Rene Beckers from the FU uh, is about. It's called Transparency in the Netherlands, a nonprofit sector. Um, it's a project still in progress, so it's not going to be a completely rounded off story with nice conclusions. But I can show you what is a bit the, the current ID, what they wanted to research and how we're helping them doing this. Uh, this is work being done by one of our e-science e research engineers, Lauda Otis. Um, so I put this together from some slides I got from them and from, the, from our kickoff meetings. So next slide, Reina, please. So what's the project about? Um, um, that's the topic of this, of the research the group is performing is about philanthropy. Uh, so the promise of philanthropy is that it's really had uh, creating a better world to help other people. Um, they have it uh, much more concrete what they actually mean. And apparently there's some sort of um, philanthropy is more effective if it's collaboration between government and, and, and corporate actors. So uh, exactly how this works and what is exactly the impact is, uh, is unclear. So the type of questions that uh, the group is studying is, uh, well, I've, I've given a list here that I copy pasted from their uh, project proposal, but they really want to know how is this, uh, yeah, how, how does philanthropy, uh, corporate, corporate entities, uh, government entities, how does this all relate? And can we actually say something concrete about all of these, uh, these things? So that is what the, the work that this, uh, this is the, 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 the science that they're interested in. And uh, next slide, Reina. They uh, came up with an idea to, to practically find answers to this. So the actual uh, work that we're, that we're wanting to do in this project is to get more insight and transparency in activities of all those uh, uh, philanthropic organizations. And um, let me check where I am. Yeah. And they came up with that the, the practical task that they want us to help with is to uh, identify for companies, uh, for uh, for charities, for, for philanthropic organizations, exactly what they are doing. So uh, what specific part of uh, what specific activities they are doing that it can be uh, labeled as philanthropy. Um, very well known are this uh, so sustainable development goals from the United Nations, but they have, I think, 17 uh, different areas where they say there needs this need for uh, need for improvement in the world. So they define this as uh, to what extent does a company actually contribute to one of those 17 uh, uh, sustainable development goals. So that's that one that no, given a corporation or philanthropic entity, what do they actually do? Then they want to make ties between those corporations. So um, are they linked between each other? Are they uh, linked uh, uh, philanthropic organizations to commercial organizations? Uh, how are they linked? Is it by board members? Is it by, by region or area or, or any other kind of things? How is this interaction? How can we actually, uh, how can you, can you actually link all these activities also to between the philanthropic world and the commercial world to see if there's any interaction going on? Um, and using all this, they want to have to get to a clearer picture of what is the philanthropic sector in the Netherlands. So this is always already a bit more, um, thank you. This is already a bit more concrete. Uh, how we, how would they then um, reformulate it for a e-science research project that we are now doing with them is the, um, 
they wanted to develop tools that can extract all these kinds of information from annual reports and other publicly available data that they have on all the corporate uh, philanthropic organizations in the Netherlands. So there is this um, CBF, that is this, um, it's an official recognition mark of, for a philanthropic organization that you know that is actually philanthropic and not trying to scam you out of your money. Uh, they have this kind of uh, a Kennings passport, like a recognition report, uh, and it shows you some text like this is what we want to do, this is what we're proud of, and some numbers and stuff. So they have this, uh, this information for around 700 registered uh, philanthropic organizations in the Netherlands. However, there's also more information. All organizations have to publish their annual, annual statements, financial statements uh, at the KVK, at the Chamber of Commerce. And that's similar types of reports. It's PDFs with text and numbers and data about their activity, about their board members uh, and what they're doing. So the exact each challenge they pose to us is um, given these data sets, how can we actually identify board members? How, how do we spot who is the board member of the um, WWF given this, this data set? And if we have the board members, what type of organization is it? Is it philanthropic? Is it commercial? Um, what is the structure? How is it organized? Uh, uh, try to see if we can classify these kinds of uh, institutes based on this, this information we have. Um, sustainable development goals, given this little text, which of the 17 uh, goals would they contribute to most? And uh, some of the other um, activities. Well, this brings us quite close to uh, actually uh, us as e-scientists being able to help answer the questions. So we applied the named entity recognition, NAD, which is a, an NLP technique to find all the, all the names and companies mentioned in those texts and, for, and, and next up linking them together. So that you know that if a company is linked, named to one place, it's the same as a company in the other way, uh, that other sentences, so to, to link up all the identical entities and to start building this network that they're interested in. For the uh, sustainable development goals, we're, we're approaching this as a topic modeling exercise, where you treat all the text as a, all the sets of documents as, a, as, 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 as stuff to be modeled, and you end up with some sort of topic, uh, depending on the, you know, the specific description they put in. Um, so many of those uh, things have been done before. So luckily we didn't have to write everything from scratch. A reuse of many of tools was possible. Uh, for named entity recognition, uh, entity linking, we're using Stanza, which is some kind of NLP tool uh, that has a reasonably good performance, uh, both in accuracy as in speed. Uh, topic modeling, we use some standard off-the-shelf tools. So we could uh, make a good start to actually try to solve this. And we get, well, the sustainable development goals, I think checking it with, um, um, with some test sets they had, we came to 84% accuracy, which is reasonably okay. Uh, one of the unexpected uh, problems, well, expected for us maybe, is that the uh, Dutch and English is always quite a big uh, distinction. So many tools work for English, but don't work for Dutch. So we had uh, quite some fun to uh, make all this work also for Dutch. Um, yeah. Okay. So that was um, that was work from uh, Laura Autos for this um, for the transparency in the Netherlands nonprofit sector. Um, we have uh, one of the other projects, which is maybe interesting to highlight here, I, it's in blue, it's from uh, Ina Lok, University of Amsterdam, the robot or the brain building a classifier for visual news frames of artificial intelligence. Um, can you switch to the next slide, please? So this project is trying to, uh, like Rob also mentioned, to see how um, artificial intelligence is actually uh, presented in pictures in the media. Um, it apparently has not been researched much before and uh, a picture is a thousand words. The, the, the message that comes out of a picture can be much uh, clearer and stronger than the text. So they wanted to have a look about how is this put in images, are there trends, uh, how does it compare to actually trends that are in the text and how to research this. Um, so that was their, their actually their research question. Um, and the way they wanted to solve this is you just feed the image through a neural network and you do a classification. So they had some, some data sets, they have a classification, like this is frame A, this is frame B, and they want to run it. Uh, next slide, please, Vena. 
So what makes this an interesting e-science problem for us? Um, the problem they have here is that they have too much data or a lot of data. So they went out to gather lots of data sets and we see here the data sets they found. Um, but if you see from the sizes, this is 3,000, 10,000, 33,000. Uh, these are thousands and thousands of images. So the, uh, the challenge here was to actually efficiently do the training of neural networks on top of this data to do the data management and organizing and to actually help them get this, uh, uh, this in principle straightforward ID. We, we take images, we just classify them with a machine neural network to get it in practice, uh, to, to also do this with some big, real challenging data sets. Um, next slide, please. So I hope that you get a sort of ID what the, uh, what kind of uh, practical, uh, practical issues would make an interesting e-science project for us. Uh, as an exercise, I just tried to summarize all the five projects that we've already funded into some sort of one-liners. So one-liner e-science challenges. Um, so we are having, uh, my model should run faster. Uh, I need to do machine learning on too many images and, uh, and comparable problems. Uh, so if you have any of those, uh, if you have any of those issues in your work and you think you could really benefit from has some experienced uh, support on, uh, on applying research software, uh, please come talk to us at one of the uh, consultation events or just give us an email. And we can try to help you convert it to an uh, interesting research project. Okay, thank you. <laughs>